Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. An appearance of a collective can sometimes be the very cover for a raping and plundering of the same. My advocacy today is called Yes to Africa, No to Pan-Africanism. Several months ago, I wrote a newspaper column which undressed the personality cult around a certain East African strongman. I think we all know who that is. Now, the acolytes and admirers of the fellow in question immediately went into character assassination overdrive with death threats, harassment, phone calls to everyone around me, you name it. What was my crime? According to the gospel of Pan-Africanism, I had crossed the African picket line to criticize a respected African leader. And for this heinous crime, I was to be canceled. Which brings us to problem number one. The optics of Pan-Africanism are awful. What the angry birds in my mentions did not realize was that I was once one of them. Just six years ago, I would never have written an article criticizing someone perceived as one of Africa's leading lights. What changed, however, between then and now was the experience of actually living in Africa as a full-grown man, as against interacting with a fictionalized, romanticized notion of the continent from the safety of Europe or North America, as I once did. In this time, I learned two important things about Pan-Africanism. I learned that first, in its signaling hotep form, it is cringeworthy, insincere, and agonizingly ignorant. But more importantly, I learned that the Nkrumah version of Pan-Africanism simply doesn't work. It is a romantic, emotional idea driven primarily by feelings as against realities. There is about half a century of evidence showing us that Pan-Africanism only ends up being a cover for dictatorships, economic vandalism, illiterate leadership, and encroachment on social and political freedoms by an ever-expanding and incompetent state. This brings us to problem number two. Pan-Africanism is anti-intellectual and insincere. The recent conversation around the death of former Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi is a case in point. To many, Gaddafi is the Pan-Africanist champion who boldly excoriated the white imperialists and had plans to turn Africa into a continental superpower. In reality, Gaddafi was a brutal dictator who had a series of disgusting personal habits and appetites, including kidnapping and raping teenage girls. His grandiose Pan-Africanist rhetoric generally never went beyond the talking phase, as his plans were impractical and unrealistic. The economically illiterate gold-backed currency, the United States of Africa, these things never had any real chance of happening, but they were precisely the type of hot air that Pan-Africanists love so much, which is why his 42-year dictatorship is now held up by, by Pan-Africanists as an example. Now, problem number three. Can the Pan-Africanist cat catch mice? Former Chinese Prime Minister Deng Xiaoping once famously remarked, it doesn't matter whether a cat is black or white as long as it catches mice. He made these comments before China opened up and launched an economic phenomenon in the early 90s. Unlike Deng, modern Pan-Africanists are not as bothered about achieving positive economic and geopolitical results as they are about doing these things a certain way. The revolutionary Marxist language, the assumption of absolute victimhood, I have no use for these things. My vision of an economically integrated Africa comes without the baggage of Nkrumah's Soviet-inspired Pan-Africanism, which has repeatedly failed for over 50 years. As I have said elsewhere, Asia, with its many geopolitical conflicts, enjoys high levels of trade integration. This has happened without Pan-Asianism, which is proof that Africa does not, in fact, need to share a single conceptual vision for trade and development to take place. Just build the roads, rails, ports, and airports, create unified trade policies conducive to economic growth, 
and allow the democratic systems we have to do their job. It's really not rocket science. Let me, let me throw my, my two Kobo worth in there. Um, I'm not sure I agree. The reason I don't is because I would call myself a Pan-Africanist simply because, especially in this day and age, and what I hear about the way the, do you say, the first world powers are banding together to reset the economic agenda. Okay. I wish we had a Pan-Africanist movement. When I look at what's happening with um, Akimumi Adeshina, I wish we had a Pan-Africanist movement that would get behind him. When I look at how people are, you know, I heard recently someone who deals in cocoa said that he was frustrated from exporting his cocoa because it's, it's, it's tipped against Africa mm -hmm. deliberately in such a way that you're forced to import the, export your raw materials at a lower price and import their finished products. So the scales are tipped against you because you're the underdog. And I feel that numbers are in our favor. And then I spoke to a friend of mine in Ghana who deals a lot in these things. And he said, if only Nigeria and Ghana would get together, that we have enough population to both sell and buy amongst ourselves, that you don't need to always be at the mercy of people like you know, the first world countries. And then I'm up, so when I looked up, when you were talking, I said, let me look up the definition of Pan-Africanist. And it says, you know, people of African descent have, it basically says that it's when people of African descent have, in, believe they have a common interest and they should be united. That's the definition I found. So I'm not sure, I, you know, Nkrumah may have had his way of seeing it a Soviet, but I don't know how many people followed, bought into that. Yeah. So my own argument would be a bit similar to what you said when you last came. Don't throw the baby out with the uh, bathwater. Just because democracy, <laughs> just because, the, I'll just say this and I'll leave the floor. Just because democracy seems to have failed doesn't mean democracy is faulty. So just because Pan-Africanism seems to have been abused by people like Gaddafi, I didn't even know he was even someone worthy of recognizing, mm. doesn't mean that you can't still have re, you know, respect, responsible leaders in Africa come together and share enough of a common vision to give us the weight we need in, on the global stage. Mm. I've finished. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, do, I do like what you've said, Ekene. I also understand where David is coming from, but just so that, you know, we can balance the skills as well. Um, I was looking at some, you know, like what happened with Madagascar when they produced their COVID-19 herbal, uh, drug, herbal drink. drug drink. And, you know, because it came from Africa, the WHO and, you know, all the Western, they, they, I mean, the WHO, let's even focus on them because let me not bring anybody else in there. They felt they could dismiss it and not give it as much credit. And they even said, oh, you know, we haven't tested it. Basically, if they haven't tested it, they haven't, uh, you know, put it through trials, then sorry, it's not something that they would advocate for. And and so they put all our herbal drinks and all our whatever remedies, they put it to the back burner, basically where we're supposed to wait for the answer to come from the West. Now, I think if we were... Pan-Africanists. Yeah, Pan-Africanists, <laughs> yes. Then we wouldn't need to wait for the West to come in and validate everything that we do. We would move as, as a force and, and we would just get our things done without you know, necessarily waiting for the West to say, well, here, have the go-ahead, blah, blah, blah. We have um, all the herbal herbal medicines and everything, we could have just come up with our own solution by ourselves instead of waiting. Because Africa has a different set of problems to the West, and yet we're constantly waiting for leadership to come from the West. Why do we do that? Why can't we come have our own homegrown solutions and work that way? But I also understand that, like you said, if, if individual economies just get on and sort out the economies themselves, then there probably won't be any need. We could all just trade like, uh, you know, w trade with the rest of the world without needing to have this label. No, but um, everybody has some kind of union. Because even Asia, like he said, I found that there is an Asian, there's a, an economic grouping of Asian countries, mm -hmm. A-S-E-A-N, where they come together under an economic union of sorts mm. of Asian countries. So everybody's looking for oh, yeah. common so everybody interests. Everybody needs an umbrella yeah. to Yeah, to so move. you can be stronger together. Mm. Mm. Do okay. I have time to respond? Yeah. Well, well, let's let's you cut them. well, let's you cut them coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but I think that um, if we're not doing well, and we're not doing well, and that's why we're killing Pan-Africanism, um, and, and so it's not so much that it's a bad idea, is that we can't do it. We're not doing it. If we had good health, um, uh, if we had good health in all our countries, there's no reason why Madagascar should come up with something and then you just push it down. What did Mag what tests did Madagascar do that was well that are coming. that are known to be good and have always been working in the past? What has Nigeria done that works? When they were all shouting behind uh, what's that man's name, um, additional, I was just laughing. And that's why I wrote somewhere on Facebook that I don't work with Adeshina. <laughs> I'd have never worked for him or with him. I don't know him. He's a stranger. Why would I get up and start saying Adeshina must be left, you know, alone? 
if he has done something wrong and they didn't find him guilty at first, but somebody says, I'm going back again, like a court of appeal or a Supreme Court, you know, that kind of... Well, has a good process. track record. Why shouldn't he? Chuka, he no, has a good track no, no, record. No, 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 no. I disagree they, with you. Been, you cannot say things. that because it's that's out there. the story you've been told. Mm. But that's what's no, out in the public domain. Yeah, Let the him the go and defend himself five times if it is necessary. No, which, um, can I, if, he, if he goes five times before a legal panel, that has a legal That's the question. Is it legal? Uh, whatever. To, because it's unprecedented to go, to go and constitute an independent I, I think panel. It, I think it's had an in I, I, in internal. That's what I wrote. I said. I said if it is, if it is legal, if they look for a legal way to try him, even after he has been tried within the bank, he should go and answer. Yeah, yeah, I'm There's with you no on that. No such thing as that. Now, what I'm saying is that we need systems that show that we're a very well-rounded continent, and then we can. We don't need to shout and jump up for a man when he may even be wrong. Mm. Rather, it will just work. There will be respect. We have no respect, and that's what you don't seem to understand. It's neither here nor there. I, I heard David very clearly mm. uh, on, on this subject matter. Africa, and I will use some of the other examples. COVID organic is an example. COVID organic is an African product. But the acceptability of COVID organic should not be because it's an African product. It should be because Africa has held its own feet to the fire and that product, we are proud of it and we know it will work. And we can take it as our own, own it. And that is what my own idea of Pan-Africanism should be. It's not about accepting inferior quality or not subjecting things to normal uh, procedures and say it is African. On, on, on the flip side, when you have a, a nation, I mean, a, a continent like Africa, where we don't trade with ourselves, but we trade with Tony Boots, there's a problem somewhere there. And there must be people, leaders within Africa, who see these things and are championing it to say, look, we cannot leave ourselves alone and start trading with all the other people. Asians trade with themselves, Americans trade with themselves, and here we are. We prefer to trade with the outside without trading with ourselves. As they like to say, Africa is a country. On the previous edition titled A Call to a New Order, Neville Agbonwanete says, if we really desire independence of the various arms of government and particularly the, the judiciary, the funding of the judiciary must be directly from the Federation account. It has to be constitutionally provided for. The executive arm should not even have anything to do with the funding of the judicial arm of government. There is a conflict of interest in our present arrangement where the, ex the executive arm allocates funding to the, to the judiciary. Where is the principle of separation of powers? We are operating a flawed structure in Nigeria and that is why we are where we are as a nation. The nation that remains stagnant and bogged down by corrupt practices at all levels. Whereas Victor Ediete says, Madam, what did you mean by planning for another 60 years? After some regions have been marginalized under the same 60 years and threatened, causing war, amongst, causing war against themselves, abuses, and bribing some leaders from the region to forsake their citizens. I believe it shouldn't stand as a notice, but a statement that Nigeria has failed woefully in, in its responsibilities because of corrupt, corrupt leaders. Victor and Ediete, thank you for your feedback but failure is a function of time and the capacity to solve a problem, neither of which has been exhausted. So we continue to advocate and welcome you joining your voice to ours on our social media platforms. On Facebook, we are Plus TV Africa and hashtag the Advocate NG. And on Twitter and Instagram, we are at Plus TV Africa and hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Now, after the break, Chuka is set up to really say something. Keep listening.